Hello everybody, welcome back to another Canary Cast video and another transfer video. It's uh, going to be a busy couple of days, isn't it? But it looks like Norwich City are going to get a CDM or a defensive midfielder, if, if we can say that. Maybe not a specific CDM, but definitely a defensive midfielder in the shape of Rostov's Matthias Norman. Yes, Norwich City have agreed a deal with Rostov finally. Don't know if it's alone, don't know if it's permanent as of speaking. Um, I would imagine it's alone with potentially uh, not an obligation, but if we stay up, then it'll be an obligation. If we don't stay up, then uh, he'll go his, his separate ways with us. But this is a player who, whilst I was just saying at the very top, probably is you traditional sit there and defend defensive midfielder. He's a bit of a Lucas Rupp. Well, he is a Lucas Rupp upgrade, Kenny McLean upgrade, I would say. Very, very good on the ball. And he's got a bite in the tackle and is physical. So he's at Rostov at the minute, has played about 50 games for them. He has had a few injuries. Um, he's not injured at the minute. Contrary to reports, according to Connor Southwell, he is not injured. So that's always a bonus. We don't need him injured just yet before they join. Apparently he did have a, or according to reports, he had like a dislocated shoulder, but that seems to be false and he seems to be absolutely okay. He will be playing for Norway, which he's got seven caps with one goal for. He is, if you look at his, his clip, he's very good at a long range effort. Um, but no, his passing is, is, is actually excellent. And um, he looks like a big upgrade on Rup which is, is is key, really. I'm not too sure about his pace. He's about 5'10", so a little bit taller than Lucas, around Kenny McLean height. He needs to have that kind of Ollie Skip shuttle bus, almost here, there and everywhere, but not have to do anything else. He's better on the ball than Skip. We saw yesterday with Leicester, and Billy Gilmore's not a defensive midfielder. That's absolutely fine. He's he, That's that's a, such a tricky position if you're just in the one, in the 4-3-3. I think Daniel Farker is has not really helped him out there. If he was in a two alongside maybe a more predominantly defensive midfielder like they did at Chelsea with Jorginho, um, who would just sit there and just keep playing the ball around, Gilmore would then flourish on his own. That number one position of, of slot of defensive midfield, it doesn't work for him. And it's very interesting that we've gone that way with the 4-3-3 because three, three, it's clearly not working. 4-2-3-1 um, would be better. I, I'm still surprised that Pierre Lima Lou hasn't been given a go in that kind of defensive midfield um, pivot simply because... He's the biggest one and the most physical one out of every midfielder we've got currently. There's, there's such a lack of quality there, though, at the minute. We're, and depth. Um, Jacob Sorensen doesn't seem to want to be trusted by Daniel Farquhar as of yet. He might come in or we might be looked at as a third centre-back option. But Norman will be playing. There's no doubt you don't loan with a potential of 14-odd million to, to, to sit on the bench. He is coming into play. And we saw Luke Fripp. He's just not good enough for this level. And that's that's OK, as, as so he's back up. He cannot be near this this side. And like I say, yesterday, just Billy coming out and the second goal is is because he's come out, rushed out. Madison then gets space to find Vardy. And there's no cover. I've seen people say Gibson and Hanley aren't good enough. Without defensive midfield cover, you're going to be so vulnerable against the best attack in, in, in the world in, in so many games. We've come up against three of the best, three of the top five last season. So... That comes up and sh shows you how how vital that defensive midfield is, especially for that that Arsenal game. We need that that shield to really help us out because everything else is starting to click into place. Whilst Pee Pookie doesn't really fit the system, we that's a whole different argument. I mean, Sargent looks better up there because he can actually hold it up. Norwich needs to do a lot of work over these next two weeks to really make us competitive. But defensive midfielder is a start. So like I say, Norman keeps the ball well. He's got bit of bite. He used to be at Brighton in the under-23s, which I imagine where Weber might have seen him for the first time and has kept a track on his um, career. Rostov only bought him for one and a half million. Now he's up to that level of, of Norway international, playing regularly for Rostov. When he's, when he's fit, he starts. Um, he knows the English game. Obviously, like I say, being with Brighton, he didn't play for them in the first team, but was in the under-23s. So he knows what, he, what this league's about. He's got the physicality and bite, which I've seen from a lot of journalists saying about him. That he's, he's got that about him, which is, is key for us. Like I say, if he has that mobility as well to be able to move around the pitch like an Ollie Skip did, then that is such a big piece of business for Norwich City. There, there'll be a lot of hope on him. A lot of things hinging on him to be very good for Norwich, which, again, isn't the best case scenario because ideally you'd have two defensive midfielders that you can just sit there and, and we'll sit in a 4 2 3 one and be able to help us kind of really stop that midfield being overrun, which it was yesterday so, so many times. And because Leicester didn't have their strongest team out, we, to be fair, got fortunate at times. It was four, four on threes and it was just, you can't, we can't do it 19-20 again, where it's just so much overloading and such crappy goals to concede just because we're being overrun. 
have to learn from that, especially when you spend the money that Norwich have this year. I know you've got the everybody dear money, but there's still been a lot of money spent in terms of actual players bringing in. And just to, to lose the potential momentum of trying to stay up on, on crap goals, which, which can be avoided by just better formations, better players, need to make a, a change there, really. Um, centre-back, I think, is still going to be looked at. Um, probably one more player in. Who, who on earth that could be? <laughs> who knows? We definitely do need one. I'd still say Andy O is, is still a little bit too young. Zimbo is not good enough, unfortunately. And Hanley and Gibson, the pace-wise, they, they what well, Gibson gets quite out pace-wise. Hanley does like to dive in, in at this level. And and you can see there is a big step up uh, defence-wise and attacking-wise in terms of how comfortable that, that those two on their own are. Still think Norwich would look better in a back three as well, which which with extra centre-back gives you that, that potential. You can't go with three centre-backs if you've only got four. But yeah, big news from Tejas Norman. Big, big signing for Norwich City. Hopefully, he's good. I, I don't know if he's the player we really need. I would still say we really needed an anchor in there to just sit and be able to destroy. Norman really isn't that. He's, like I say, a bit more of an aggressive rook in terms of ball retention. I, I'm unsure about this one. It, it feels like he's a very good player. Does he fit exactly what we need? I'm not so sure, but we will wait and see. It's exciting to see what he'll do. Hopefully, he will be the missing piece of the jigsaw for Norwich. It's going to be a lot of money if we do stay up. About 14 odd million, reportedly not confirmed, so I can't say for guarantee, but I think it is going to be a loan with uh, an obligation to buy if we do stay up. But yeah, big, big opportunity for Norman to come to the Premier League and and show what he's worth, really. He's, like I say, played for Norway for the for seven games. He's, he's got into that national side now, which could be interesting to see him if he starts over the international break, really have a bit of a, a scouting mission on him and see exactly what he is. But he is a deep line midfielder. He will not be an attacking midfielder. Um, just don't know if he's got that bite that we need, that real destroyer in that midfield, which is, is still needed since Alex tete has gone and Ollie Skip. So, interesting one. Hopefully, this is the Ollie Skip replacement we desperately need. But we'll wait and see. Let me know down below if you like this video and is this the guy? Isn't, are you happy to see Norman coming in? We'll wait and see. It's, it's one of those which hopefully will work. Hopefully Weber's got it right because it's such a big piece of the jigsaw we need filling. But yeah, anyway, look forward to speaking to you soon about probably more imminent transfers or one more transfer in the coming days. But until then, I'll see you in the next one.